My name is Marco Collins, and I am very excited. Took us a minute to get this thing going, just working out the sound here in the live room. Uh, I'm very excited to jump into this set. It's the first in-studio session I have hosted in seven years, you guys. So it's especially exciting that I get a band that I love. Uh, they are on tour. They're here in Seattle. They're playing a sold-out show tonight at the Moore Theater. Uh, let's jump into this live session from Always on KEXP. One,
also love <laughs> being live on the radio. You got to tune. You got to make sure you sound okay. Always here in the studio. Thanks for buying us some time. Yeah, absolutely.
Yes, Yay. now I can yell. I, I had to let it breathe for a minute there. Man, you guys make the kind of pop music I love. Just you dirty it up, it's noisy, it's crunchy. Um, I appreciate that in such a big way because you can still hear the brilliance between or uh, just out of the just pure sweet pop music. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> did you it's like those statement. really live moments? <laughs> yes, I did. I love the fact that you had to plug in your guitar uh, with the intro of the song. Yeah, that's for the live listeners. Yeah. Just a, a bit of reality. <laughs> the band is always, and uh, they are playing the Moore Theater tonight, sold out show. Um, thank you, guys. This is your second session here. I believe it's third. the third yeah. session. And okay. we have done a KEXP concert, I believe. Ah, too. you have. Okay. Yeah. So it's your first one in six years. They're yeah, about. We took a break. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're working on this new record. The album is called Blue Rev. You just heard four songs from that record. Belinda Says, which I want to talk about. Tom Verlaine, which I want to talk about. <laughs> Mini Mirrors and Easy On Your Own is the song that you started off with. You guys kind of went away to work on this record, to write the record, right? You went to an island, I heard. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, fr I'm from an island, so is Al, and so is Carrie, but I go to this place called Toronto Island sometimes when it's available, and I just walk along the shore and act weird and strange and you know, become a loner for a couple weeks and cook up ideas, but I don't think it's all that unique, but it's, <laughs> it's fun for me. I mean, it sounds like a very, just a solid place to get ideas and to clear your head and... Yeah, I mean, it's nice to be able to have the space to fail. Right. Like, sometimes when you're just in your apartment and your neighbors are like, new songs are sounding good. Right. And you're like, oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Got to seal up those ducts. Yeah, yeah. Right, so nobody <laughs> can hear it. Uh, you guys are currently, you live in Toronto, right? Yep. Have you met Drake? I have no met Not Drake. yet. <laughs> Not yet. Have you yet. met The Weeknd? Yeah. Oh, no, not yet. Do you, are you a fan? Yeah, Carrie and I listen to Don Your FM fans. all the time. Yeah, I yeah. love that record. <laughs> it's so good. It's just beautiful. Um, I want to go to Toronto so bad, you guys. I'm a huge fan of the Toronto Film Festival. Still never been to that. Um, <laughs> I've got to come out there sometime. Tell me about Blue Rev. That was a drink, Molly, that you imbibed on in high school. Yes, it's sort of like, uh, I, I don't know what's in America. It's probably not like Four loco, not as extreme. <laughs> okay, but, but it's um, vodka-based, yeah? I believe so, yeah. There's some energy, natural energy element in there, too. Okay. And I was trying to figure out whether or not it was carbonated. Okay. But why name the album that? Um, I just, it, it's sort of like this weird portal into the past. I was thinking it would be something like the song Strawberry Wine, where you uh. take a sip of something and you just are uh, immediately transported into, into your youth. And uh, okay. I, I'd know that if I had taken a sip of that recently, I would have been thinking about <laughs> a lot of hilarious just endeavors as, as a teen. Yeah. That memories. don't need to be shared. <laughs> Anecdotes but don't need to be, be shared. But it would be fun to share that. <laughs> I mean, you might as well exercise those demons. Um, do you, uh, Molly, you are kind of a part of Canadian musical royalty, if, hmm. if you will. You come from a family that was very well known for doing folk and Celtic music. The Rankin family, your last name? Indeed. Yeah. Yes, they are my family. Yeah. Um, Were you a part of the group? I actually went on one tour with them as like a reunion thing. I was like a, a side feature, played the fiddle and did some I Scottish step that. dancing. Yeah. Have you and always played the fiddle? When I was little, yes. I played a lot with Carrie, actually. That was like one of our pastimes. Wow. Um, but I never really graduated to getting good at it. I what? must I must just reiterate that. <laughs> Not what, true. What does your family think about... I went and listened to a bunch of tracks from your family's band, and I was like, wow, very different... Uh, element very I mean it's it's traditional folk it reminds me of like 70s stuff a lot of storytelling going on mm. how do they feel about what you're doing now 
I think that, I mean, they're super supportive. I don't talk to them a ton because everyone is like all over North America. Right. But anytime I see them, and sometimes they come to the shows, it's really nice. I mean, they don't say that we're too loud and it sounds bad. So to <laughs> me, that's enough. It, when you guys play live, is it very loud? Like it was, you know, reasonably <laughs> like monitored here in the studio, but I'm imagining that wall of sound hits you pretty hard. Some rooms are just boomy and uh, and dicey. Yeah. I don't know. Alec, can you attest to... It's my fault. We're too loud. <laughs> is, it, definitely... is it my bloody Valentine loud? Uh, is it that kind of piercing, you weren't, wonderful... You won't burst into laughter at a, like you would at <laughs> listening to Holocaust at a My Bloody Valentine show. Right. Like, okay. It's not that loud, no. It's And it's not like Place to Bury Strangers loud either. It's just... Pretty darn loud. Uh, but <laughs> Pretty darn loud. Okay. I don't know. We like to move some wind through the cones, you know. When I listen to your stuff, I hear, you know, uh, things that I think you're influenced by. Uh, but you've collaborated with a lot of cool people like Norman from Teenage Fan Club. Molly, you got up on stage with the Jesus and Mary Chain and sang Just Like Honey. That's one of my favorite songs of all time. Mm, it's a beautiful song. What I, was that like? Well, I didn't, I didn't actually know I was doing it until right before, but we, I, we did, we had a chance to check it. And when I did check it, uh, Jim Reed was like, can you hear yourself? <laughs> that Scottish accent. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it was bad. Did you get to spend, you guys toured with them for a little while? We did a did? couple of dates in Australia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was nice. They're great live. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I stayed at his place in Kentish Town once Whoa. Uh, for uh, New Year's Eve, and yeah. he is the weirdest guy in the world. We had a house full of people. It's several <laughs> levels, and all of a sudden, four in the morning, he would blast all throughout the condo the Looney Tunes theme at 10, just to wake everybody up and then... Nothing. Just go back to sleep. That's sadistic. <laughs> it what, was amazing. Why were you there? Uh, we were there just, to, we were visiting London. He got us tickets to see Basement Checks on New Year's Eve. So you're a bit of a VIP then. I, I guess. I guess. <laughs> it's, uh, that was a long time ago, though. Cool. Yeah, my VIP has dwindled. <laughs> um, uh, let's talk more about the record. I love, uh, Belinda says, um, there's, a, it, first I thought, Oh, the Belinda, that must be a reference to my bloody Valentine's guitar player, but it is not. It's, <laughs> it's a reference to the Go-Go's lead singer. Yeah, Belinda Carlisle. Uh, I mean, we're fans of the Go-Go's and Belinda and Jane. I uh, watched the Go-Go's doc. So cool. I love that doc. They were wild, which I, I thought was really Crazy neat to watch. Ladies. Yeah. Um, but Alec, you're the one who actually came up with that line. So would you like to? I mean, it was sort of like a eureka moment. Yeah, I think you'd come up with the blue rev behind the rink line, and we laughed quite a bit at that. Um, and then uh, I was on a bike ride with our friend Adrian and uh, just was wowed by the beauty of uh, heaven as a place on earth. I had the thought that it should be played instead of national anthems at like hockey games and stuff. Like, <laughs> it's, instead of like a, you know, a patriotic thing, more like an internationalist humanist thing. I think it's this sneaky, secular, utopian anthem that wow. people Bring don't, depth. Wow, you people got don't quite realize. So <laughs> it just, uh, yeah, it seemed to fit nicely in the song. Wait, this all came to you on a bike ride? <laughs> I may have been on psilocybin. I was going to say, I, was gonna say <laughs> I want some of that. <laughs> got to be something else going on. Um, talk about Tom Verlaine. Uh, was the song inspired by television and Tom Verlaine? I mean, I love uh, the television records, and I, I don't know much about Tom Verlaine, but I, I read once an interview that he did with someone. It's sort of like a notorious one where he wasn't really giving giving much. Okay. Um, and I don't know, like there are some moments on the record where I felt like I was trying to channel a little bit of television, but this song is kind of independent of that. I thought like the final piece of the puzzle lyrically was you were my Tom Verlaine sitting on the hood. Um, and okay. I just liked him kind of sitting on the hood. Yes. Yeah, squinting, not approving, rubbing his chin on the hood <laughs> in a leather jacket. It made sense to me, but I hope I'm not demystifying God, anything. That's awesome. Uh, I just read a piece. I know you've got fans everywhere, and you've got some uh, pretty big fans. 
Uh, you guys obviously have seen the Jeff Tweedy from Wilco cover of Pharmacist. We heard it. Yeah. 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 What did you, you think of it? It instantly sounded like Yankee Hotel Fox. Yes. <laughs> it, like, so it did. It did. Yeah. But I love, when he, I love that he wrote, I learned this short and sweet beauty a little while ago when it was released as a preview track for always new record Blue Rev. I love the unexpected seed demolished chord in the chorus. <laughs> if I understand these lyrics correctly, I think the chord, C, D minor? Dimi diminished. Diminished, yeah. actually. Makes the phrase, I hear it happens all the time, even more withering and full of delicious, pitying scorn. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to wither whenever we can. What are you, when you Poet. read that, were you like, all right, fantastic. I didn't read that part. I heard Al, Al was playing it in, uh, in uh, Minneapolis, and I, I really thought it was beautiful, but uh, yeah. I didn't see that he said it was demolished. Yeah. That's cool. Isn't that great? Yeah. Uh, thank you guys very much for coming in. I'm really grateful that I got to witness it firsthand because the show is obviously sold out. So uh, always playing tonight, more theater, and we hope to see you next time you're in town. Yeah, thanks for coming out of retirement. Yeah, it's <laughs> so nice to be back. Uh, Blue Rev is the name of the new record, and this is KEXP's In Studios. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.